Now, we have mixed our lead vocals. Generally what happens is that in these sorts of productions, we generally deal with a lot of vocals. Now, the name of the game is create space and avoid as much as possible masking or clashing in frequencies when it comes to lead vocals. Now, this session has a variety of harmonies and background vocals that Chetty did. And I'm gonna let you hear all our vocals without the processing, actually, with the background vocals. So I'm gonna mute my lead vocal. I'm gonna let you hear only the doubles and triples here. Actually, to be fair, I'm gonna let you hear the doubles and triples without the processing and the effects. In context with the lead vocals, with my effects. So as you can hear, these background vocals, actually these doubles, triples, helps with one very specific feature, which has to do with what we generally call phase shifting. Now, all these vocals have been recorded and then, of course, edited so that we don't have a choir we have just an enormous thick sound that comes from the fact that even if you edit these vocals to perfection, as you can see, their behavior, physically speaking, is drastically different. Now, some waveform hits slightly before, some slightly after, some of them look a little bit out of phase. Now, this incoherence is what actually makes things sound extremely wide, extremely broad. But as we start adding elements, the risk of masking and damaging what we did with our main vocals start to grow exponentially. So what can we do to avoid this? So right now we have our main vocal that has a specific sound and texture. Now within our background vocals, First and foremost, we have used, again, an instance of Silk. Now, Silk in this case helps me to deal with four different kind of takes. Oh, wow. yeah. Right? And tame down a bit of the muddiness of it. Let me select this section over here and let you hear without Silk and then with Silk. You hear that all of a sudden the whoa -ho goes from sounding like this to actually open up a bit more. And this is the power of this incredible plugin. So what we're doing, we're just steaming down a bit of the lows. Actually, let me compensate for that volume for a minute. So here's what we're listening at the moment. with silk. Oh, wow. yeah. So a lot of these very unwanted proximity effects frequencies, such as the one that sits in the mids oh, wow. yeah. and the lows, mm -hmm. are actually taken care of by silk. So instantaneously, we have a vocal that doesn't have any unwanted resonances, nor we have to actually use brutal EQ to carve down specific frequency that we might need on a later on performance. Again, I'm gonna let you hear without silk and then with. Just 
just a phenomenal tool. It just already brought my vocals to a whole different level. After this, um, I've used Waves Artbox. Artbox is one of the, I would say, easiest and best way to kind of like level up discrepancies in vocals. It's an extremely easy compressor. It has pretty much three knobs, a compressor, a gate, but I do a lot of manual gating, so I cut and remove things I don't want. And then again, listen how much all of a sudden, let's move to um, our pre-chorus, which has a bit more dynamic. We go from something steady and very bouncy. Always knew I can be the one. So ready to show what I become. My life. Sorry, let me remove. Always knew I can be the one. So ready to show what I become. My life. My life. Yeah. With our comp. Always knew I can be the one. So ready to show what I become, my life, my life, yeah. Without. Always knew I can be the one. So ready to show what I become, my life, my life. So our comp kind of like help us to rebuild some sort of like gain structure to bring together these vocals. Now, of course, with our comp, we have a, an additional problem, which has to do with S's and other extra resonances that we brought up. So I generally try to tame them down a bit more with a multiband compressor, and in this case, I'm using a Waves C6. Focus on how the vocal sounds without and then with. Always knew I can be the one, so ready to show what I become, my life. Always knew I can be the one, so ready to show what I become. A lot of the problem comes actually from this mid frequency band. Always knew I can be the one. So which we tamed a bit with a sort of like a dynamic EQ here. Always knew I can be the one. So ready to show what I become. Always knew I can be the one. Always knew I can be the one. So ready to show what I become. So the first thing we do with this multiband compressor is kind of like taming down an offending frequencies, actually two offending frequencies. One was at 578 hertz. Always knew I can be the one. This very boxy frequencies to kind of like allow the vocals to speak out a bit more. Then we remove and tamed a bit more of this frequency range around 4K. Always knew I can be the one. So ready to show which specifically on her voice kind of like are those letters that shred your ears apart if listening for a long time. And then what I did, I used this multiband compressor, you know, sort of like uh, downward and upward compression where I've actually boosted a lot of the high end, but nevertheless, the high end here kind of like returns almost to the zero, rhythmically timed with the attack and release sync to her performance. Always knew I can be the one, so ready to show what i become, my life. Without. Always knew I can be the one. With. Always knew I can be the one. You hear how lighter the vocal sounds. It's kind of like they're fluctuating right now. Now that we are making them so bright, though, we run into a problem that sibilances are kind of like starting to pop up a bit more. And as I said before, no better tool than using a deester like sibilance right after our multiband processing power. Always knew I can be the one. So ready to show what I become. With? Always knew I can be the one. So ready to show what I become. My life. The way I use sibilance here, it's a bit more aggressive, uh, as those are background vocals. So I don't want to build up on the S's, whereas I have used it in a bit more um, peaceful way, if you may, uh, within lead vocals. As I did for my lead, I add a bit of color and harmonic distortion with Waves Magma Tube. Always knew I can be the one, so ready to show what I become. Always knew I can be the one, so ready to show what I become. My life. I made them very thin for one reason. Since we are using them to kind of like expand the width of the vocals not the depth, but the width. 
I want a lot of the weight coming from the center and a lot of the excitement coming from the sides. I've then controlled a bit their performance with an F6, which is a dynamic EQ, which can be molded into using, into working stereo or mid-side. In this case, this is my stereo EQ. And what I did was try to, again, tame down a bit of the 1K range, which is the very annoying frequency that almost hurts your nose, and expand the high end of the vocals. So that we have a very broad and wide and very thin vocals to then keep everything under control with my L2 uh, limiter. Always knew I can be the one, so ready to show what I become, my life. Always knew I can be the one, so ready to show what I become, my life. Now in this case, with these vocals, I'm only using the H reverb, automated, and a plate. And we might want to be able to listen to them, right? I'm assuming so. Always do I can be the one, so ready to show what I become my life. With the lead vocals. Always do I can be the one, so ready to show what I become my life. Life. My life. Yeah. In context. Always knew I could be the one So ready to show what I've become My life My life Yeah Without background vocals Or actually doubles and triples Always knew I could be the one So ready to show what I've become My life My life Yeah Can't help but feel alive In a place where I'm So you start to understand how important processing these vocals slightly different and kind of like glue them together with specific effects such reverbs and delay can create a lot of dynamics within the actual vocal performance. Of course, we're not done yet. I have a series of a lot of other harmonies. So let's go ahead. And the processing I've used for these vocals is rather similar. The only few things I did differently, let me mute these two guys. So in the section over here, as you heard, I wanted the vocals to really fluctuate and support the lead vocals. The performance is beyond perfection. So how can I, as a mixer, enhance this performance farther? And what I did over here, other than using, once again, an instance of Vocal Silk or Vox, was using uh, CLA 76. I really like the bluey face because it hyper accentuate a bit more the high end of vocals. So this is my very first color on their vocals. Listen without, actually the effects, without also the CLA. With the 1176. You hear that the vocals all of a sudden start to glue together um, in a very musical way to then have, again, our C6 taking care of the very annoying part of this OO, which is in the low mid register. In the city, oh, in the 
The C6 is actually shaping the way that these vocals will actually be glued together with the lead vocals and work accordingly. To then use a pull tech, a puke tech um, emulation to kind of like boost a bit more the 3K area. In this case, we had a very sharp bandwidth and attenuate a bit of 100, which if you think about it, her vocals are within the 300 hertz range, but yet this plugin is doing a marvelous well job in creating specific resonance filters so that even if I attenuating at 100 hertz, I'm actually attenuating a bit further than that. So all of a sudden, these vocals are that are very airy, very floating in the air. They also have a specific texture. They're not just there. They are part of the arrangement, the melodic arrangement of the song. And kind of like to control everything, I put an extra C1 compressor. It just tames down ever so slightly the peaks. On top of this, I've used an H reverb, an H delay, and a plate. You see how the H delay is actually contributing and extending the length of the decay of these vocals. So as you heard, it's kind of like very hard right now for the vocals to compete against this humongous production. So I'm going to let you hear now the difference that our processing did in order to attribute the vocals the right amount of girth and aptitude to compete within this production. I'm going to let you hear before, without, and then with. So it's night and day. And again, mixing is not a recipe. Here we just used our vision to kind of like understand where we could have bring an, a, great, a great vocal performance from being great to being the greatest in comparison with the type of music we're working on. I really hope you kind of like understand step by step the why and the how we're using specific processing power. I have uploaded my chain into Studio Rack. So please go ahead, download it, make it yours, and let me know in the comments what you think about it. One more thing, if you're interested in using any of the Waves plugins I've used within this mixing session, I have left a link down in the description for you to actually access them, download it, and try them out. I hope you really enjoyed this video series. I had a lot of fun, and there's gonna be more things we're gonna be addressing in the future. Until then, thank you for watching. Ciao.